begin. Hi, I'm Randy Vance. I'm the director of Boating Lab, and today I get to finish a project I started five years ago. It's the restoration of my GT 150 Glastron. Now, this boat is the 1978 model that jumped over the levee in James Bond's Live and Let Die. I've got a new Honda motor on it, lots of great new technology, and this great new touch, the Monster MTK wakeboard tower. Now, I not only get a great tow point with this, I get a new stern light so I can eliminate that pull-out stern light that's such an annoyance on most boats. Steve Beck from Monster Tower, show me how this project is done. Right on, let's, let's get go. it on. Spread out the parts and be sure everything required is present. Then gather the tools. You'll need a reversible electric drill, drill bits from 1 8, 1 quarter, 5 16, 3 8 and 1 half inch in size. You'll also need a chamfer router bit or a step drill to bevel the gel coat edge at the bolt holes. You'll need a socket wrench with 13 mm, 17 mm and 19 mm sockets. You can substitute a half inch socket for a 13 mm and a 3 quarter inch socket for a 19 mm. Allen wrenches are supplied. You'll also need masking tape, pencil and tape measure. Determine which mounting configuration is best for your boat. A top mounted tower is ideal if there's adequate hull width and enough mounting surface area on the deck. We chose a side mount for the Glastron GT150 due to its narrow beam and scant surface mounting area. Assemble the tower tubing on a tarp for protection. Screw the heim joints into the tube bases about halfway. Assemble the base mounts and swivels. Loosely fasten the base mounts to the tower. Mask the mounting area to protect the gel coat during installation. With a couple of helpers, lift the tower into place and roughly determine the mounting position. Mark the ideal position and repeat that on each side. You want to double check this by measuring the distance from the forward mounting blocks to the stern. That's to check for symmetry. Many boats aren't symmetrical regardless of appearance. If they are out of square too much, adjustments will be difficult. Lift the tower into place and make a final position check. Remove a mounting base and use it for a template for drilling the bolt holes. Mark the perimeter of the block and the holes. Now check behind the hull surface and clear out any flotation foam. Cut backing boards at least 18 inches long and at least 3 inches wide from half inch plywood. Plywood backing boards are secured inside the deck to help distribute the stress from the tower while towing. It will help prevent gel coat cracks too. Glue them in using 3M5200 adhesive or Sea Life adhesive. For this video, we use Plexus for its fast curing time, but it's not necessary for a sound installation. We clamped our backing boards in place by screwing through the snap holes. Alternatively, you could drill 1 8 inch pilot holes for the bolt holes and clamp the block in with 1 inch screws. To drill the holes, begin with a 1 8 inch bit and set the drill to reverse. Drill through the gel coat and the fiberglass before drilling in forward. Progress through the larger bits until you get to the final size. Use a chamfer router bit or a step drill to bevel the gel coat by hand. This will further protect against gel coat cracks that could run from beneath the tower mounting bases. Before tightening the blocks, grease the nuts to keep them from seizing should you need to remove them later. If the tower will fold forward for storage, the large part of the mounting base should be aft for a full range of motion. If the tower will fold aft, be sure to reverse them. Secure the base swivels, but just finger tight to assist in determining the block positions on the hull. So let's fit her in place. After firmly mounting the front blocks to the tower, raise it up to position the aft base blocks. Repeat the drill process. Now tighten all the base mounts and swivels, adjusting the swivels to a vertical position. Bolt the aft heim joints to the aft swivel mounts. This part can be tricky and require lots of trial and error adjustment of the heim joints. Adjust the tower by screwing the heim joints in or out until the fit is smooth and releasing the aft heim joints requires only a little assistance from a buddy to lift the tower, removing its weight from the joint. So you can raise and lower the tower without tools, install the quick release knob. Attach the tether to the swivel bolt. Then, screw the knob to the heim joint. Once the tower is in place, there are four more holes to drill at the top joints. First, measure the tower diagonally from the forward access port in the tubing. Repeat the measurement from the other side. The measurements should match and indicate the tower is symmetrical or square. 
If they don't match, push on the top measuring point of the long measurement to adjust it. The heel of your palm or a rubber mallet should do the trick. When square, use the 10 millimeter bit provided to begin the first hole. Just drill enough to form a divot in the metal. Switch to an eighth inch drill bit and drill through. This will make a perfectly centered guide for the entire hole, preventing the 10 millimeter bit from walking aside. Repeat this process on the remaining corners, then bolt it all together. Next, thread the stern light wire through the stern light base, then through the spool, and finally through the threaded mounting base. Use a fish tape to pull the wire through the tubing to the bottom of the base. Be sure to thread the wire through the grommets and leave enough slack for the tower to fold. Then screw the all-around navigation light into the tower through the nylon tow rope collar. The finishing touch is placing the rubber caps into the access ports on the top of the tower. We didn't immediately get to enjoy the fun new tower, but grabbed a quick ride on a new ZUP board a week or so later. When the tower is properly installed, you can lower it with the help of a friend. Have him or her hold the tower up, pushing aft slightly while you loosen and remove the quick release knobs. So, it's about a seven, maybe an eight hour job, or you could take out some of the camera time that we had on, but Steve, it's a job that anybody could do. You read the directions, a drill, a screwdriver, a couple of wrenches, a couple of Allen wrenches, it's not even big tools. A couple of friends. A couple of friends, yeah. Friends help position things while you mark the bases. Well, I'm Randy Vance, this is Steve Beck. We just put a monster tower on a 1978 Glastron GT 150.